It is a joy to worship the Lord today in the spirit of holiness and truth. I'd like to welcome you all to our broadcast for today, uh, July the 2nd, 2020. I am broadcasting live here from uh, Los Angeles, California. It's 8.34 p.m. and Pacific Daylight Saving Times. I would like to welcome all of you to our study today from this important uh, book that all Christians who are looking forward to the second coming of Jesus Christ must read. This is a must read for all of us as the prophecies are unfolding in rapid succession. So today, friends, I would like to read with you what had convicted me uh, l many years ago when I first read this uh, book. And I pray that you will get uh, to... Uh, uh, acquire or obtain a copy of the original what I mean the uh, unfiltered the uh, un, uh, uncut version of the great controversy from the messenger of the Lord uh, I would like to invite you to read with me today if you have the book and if not I would like to just uh, broadcast this to all the world that uh, the truth might be uh, spread today. So I would like to begin reading from chapter 36 of this great controversy. Chapter 36, it's entitled The Impending Conflict. As I reread this, friends, I am anticipating the uh, fierce battles, spiritual as well as the physical, emotional mental and the psychological warfare between the forces of the good and the forces of evil. So I would like to begin reading from the pen of inspiration, the messenger of the Lord speaking. From the very beginning of the great controversy, in heaven it has been Satan's purpose to overthrow the law of God. So that is very clear in the book of Revelation as well, in the book of Daniel. It was to accomplish this that he entered upon his rebellion against the Creator. And though he was cast out of heaven, he has continued the same warfare upon the earth. So this is the strategy, the grand design of the dragon. Satan, the father of lies. So friends, let me continue reading here. To deceive men and thus lead them to transgress God's law is the object which he has steadfastly pursued. So this is the aim, this is the goal of the enemy of God. Let me continue reading here. Whether this be accomplished by casting the law altogether or by rejecting one of his of its precepts, the result will be ultimately the same. The Bible says in James chapter 2, verse 10, He that offends in one point manifests contempt for the whole law. His influence and example are on the side of transgression. He becomes guilty of all. So, the Ten Commandments is the law of God. It is the supreme law of God's government to love God and to love his neighbor as himself or as himself, yes. I would like to continue reading. In seeking to cast contempt upon the divine statutes, Satan has perverted the doctrines of the Bible. And errors have thus become incorporated into the faith of thousands who profess to believe the scriptures. So this is to tell all of us that 
Satan has been deceiving and has been perverting the doctrines of the Bible. So we must be careful in reading the Word of God, friends, as we are being attacked and deceived by the evil one. The last great conflict between truth and error is but the final struggle of the long-standing controversy concerning the law of God. Upon this battle, we are now entering a battle between the laws of man and the precepts of Jehovah, between the religion of the Bible and the religion of fable and tradition. And a quote for now. Friends, it is laid out from this chapter, the first two paragraphs, the master scheme of the devil himself. How he wanted to erode the faith of the Word of God. That those Christians who are diligently seeking the Word of God will be offloaded and they will be manipulated to question the doctrines of the Holy Scripture, the Bible. That's why, friends, there are so many, so many uh, denominations and so many factions within the, the Protestant Reformation, the movement that God has steered to break away from the Roman Catholic bondage, from the yoke of Rome, which is described in the book of Daniel chapter 7 and uh, in the book of Revelation, which, which pinpoints that the Roman papacy or the Roman popery or the bishop of Rome or the present day pope system is indeed the biblical prediction and prophecy as the man of sin the system of the Antichrist the system that has changed the law of God is specifically the heart of his commandment which is to remember the seventh day Sabbath as the day of rest and as the day of worship so this is very clear and this is very uh, focused in our study in our reading today the choice is between the religion of the Bible and the traditions of men the religion based on fable and myth and tradition I would like to continue reading the last paragraph of page 582. The agencies which will unite against truth and righteousness in this context are now actively at work. This was written almost 200 years ago and they were so active unleashing the secret orders that governs and controls the human, the human agencies. The orders that descended from popery or papal supremacy the secret societies the fraternal traditions specifically the most fiercest and the most uh, loyal of all this order is called the society of loyola the society of the militant army of intellectuals and the uh, propagators and actors of the Roman popery. So friends, it is very clear if we study the book, the great controversy, who is the Antichrist, who is our enemy, which is embodied in the prophecy of the dragon, the beast power, Satan, the father of life. Luciferian companies and in the universal church the Roman Catholic system the pap uh, papacy and the popery these are predicted these are prophesied in the prophetic book of Daniel and Revelation and in fact they were so dedicated to destroy the Protestant voices that they had continually continually 
prospered in doing so until this time look at the government especially here in the United States they were so infiltrated by the disciples and the the offsprings fraternal offsprings of Ignatius Loyola that they were so educated that their sole purpose is to destroy Bible believing Christians commandment keeping believers so friends we should not be surprised that this persecution is even unleashed now without the media hype and in subtle yet very scheming swift persecution of those who voice against the papal supremacy and the papal system so friends the agencies the government the arts the entertainment the military the politicians the corrupt business people will unite against truth and righteousness and they are so active even right now right now in the United States of America those who are controlling the president are society of Loyola educated people who advise who who counsel the most powerful man in the free world friends dangerous moment the impending doom is even at the door all we need to do right now is open our eyes and open our minds to this conflict that is set before us which was prophesied by the messenger of the Lord 200 years almost 200 years ago and I'd like to continue reading God's holy word which has been handed down to us at such a cost of suffering and blood the Christian martyrs who believed the Bible and kept the true Sabbath the seventh day Sabbath were all martyred except for those who heed in the Alps in the uh, mountains of uh, Switzerland in other hiding places in Europe they suffered and their blood was spilled it will be of little value according to this writing if we will not understand the cost of what these people had suffered before in honor of God's holy word the Bible is within the reach of all but there are few who really accept it as the guide of life this statement is very true today there are so many available Bibles in fact the enemy of God is so wise as as to change the translations and the versions subtly and with cunning devices to omit some of the important words of the Bible that's why in my broadcast I uphold the King James Version Bible the Protestant platform of truth in the English speaking word world friends so please be aware that there are newer versions that are that are seemingly nice to understand but they lack the substance the purity of the Protestant faith the spirit of prophecy infidelity prevails to an alarming extent not in the world merely but in the church this statement again is very true even inside those who profess to believe in the Bible the church itself had loosened had clearly undermined the true doctrines and teachings of the Bible many had come to deny doctrines which are the very pillars of the Christian faith the great facts of creation as presented by the inspired writers the fall of man 
the atonement, the perpetuity of the law of God are practically rejected either wholly or in part by a large share of the professedly Christian world. Thousands who pride themselves upon their wisdom and independence regard it as an evidence of weakness to place implicit confidence in the Bible. They think it a proof of superior talent and learning to cavil at the scriptures and so and to spiritualize and explain away their most important truths end of quote what is happening is that there are professed Christians who redefine the doctrines of the scriptures because they want to showcase their talent their knowledge to cavil to 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 iron to shape according to their opinions the proven time-tested doctrines of the Bible so they undermine the faith the pure faith of those simple Bible believing Christians and that is happening even among those who are chosen to be the very elect the Seventh-day Adventist Christians there are infiltrators bad actors who are leading congregations receiving money from the church from the faithful few people and they are caviling or they are uh, wordsmithing the doctrines of the Bible friends I would like to warn you that these people who are left-leaning they call themselves progressives liberal have undermined by being so nice by being so uh, by being so cool and chill in their interpretation of the Bible so that the world will accept them but the fact of the matter is they are not true to the Word of God they have uh, they have belittled the foundation of the true church and they have caused irreparable damage to those faithful but I'm glad just like in the Bible there were 7,000 who did not bow down to Baal or to the world there are also few I would surmise who have not bowed down to this group of people, bad actors in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, left-leaning, liberal, and progressive, so to speak. And they are waging war against the doctrines of the Bible. There are so many examples about these people who are insiders, who are eroding like termites the doctrine of the Holy Bible specifically from the King James Version Bible and I call them the pretenders of the truth and they should be unmasked and must be unmasked because the spirit of prophecy says they take pride upon their wisdom and upon their independence regard regarded as an evidence of witness weakness to place implicit confidence in the Bible so they want to use unfaithful authors in lieu of established biblical truth they want to uh, they want to circumvent the foundations of the true religion of the Holy Scripture so friends it is time to come out of that false system it's time to come out of her my people to the Babylon who came inside the Seventh-day Adventist Church but there are few who remain loyal and faithful to the Word of God and I would like to urge you to be faithful to be steadfast in the faith we have an enemy within us we have people who are being used by the devil consciously or unconsciously because there are no middle ground in this fight in this warfare the impending doom has come
has arrived. The impending conflict is fiercely fought today. I would like to continue reading. Many ministers are teaching their people and many professors and teachers are instructing their students that the love of God has been changed or abrogated and those who regard its requirements as still valid to be literally obeyed are thought to be deserving only of ridicule or contempt. This is truly what's happening right now, friends. That's why the church is impotent in evangelizing the world. They don't have power. Look at the thousands of dollars misused for evangelism to not to convict the souls of sin, but to entertain people who are not converted. In fact, they ridicule and they mock those who are faithful inside the church. And these are ministers, pastors, professed leaders of the church of God. And they must be unmasked. And they must be, they must be exposed and rebuked and ask them to repent from their ways and come back to the true, pure, noble doctrine of the Holy Scriptures before it's too late. Look at what's happening, friends. This is the moment to be vigilant and to be on the side of truth. I would like to continue the next paragraph found in page 583. In rejecting the truth, men reject its author. In trampling upon the law of God, they deny the authority of the lawgiver. It is as easy to make an idol of false doctrines and theories as to fashion an idol of wood or stone by misrepresenting the attributes of God. Satan leads men to conceive of him in a false character. With many, a philosophical idol is enthroned in the place of Jehovah, while the living God, as he is revealed in his word, in Christ and in the works of creation, is worshipped by but few. Thousands defy nature while they deny the God of nature. Though in a different form, idolatry exists in the Christian world today as verily as it existed among ancient Israel as in the days or in the days of Elijah. The God of many professedly, professedly wise men, of philosophers, poets, politicians, and journalists, the God of polished fashionable circles, of many colleges and universities, even of some theological institution, is letter little better than Baal, the sun god of Phoenicia. No error, page 584 states, accepted by the Christian world strikes more boldly against the authority of heaven. None is more directly opposed to the dictates of reason. None is more pernicious in its results than the modern doctrine so rapidly gaining ground that the law that God's law is no longer binding upon men the law of God is under supreme attack to destroy it is their utmost goal within the church that God has established without the church our enemies within and without termites inside the elements of uh, the elements of opposition outside. So friends, this is the conflict that is here that we are f battling today. They may be your next door neighbor. Do you go with them in the churches. They may be party goers together in the churches. They go where, where, the, where the crowd is. But they have a different agenda. They have different philosophical ideas. So we must be vigilant. We must be able to defend our faith.
against this fallen uh, man and woman who had come to deceive and to destroy the law of God. Every nation has its laws which command respect and obedience. No government could exist without them and can it be conceived that the creator of the heavens and the earth has no law to govern the beings he has made? Suppose that prominent ministers were publicly to teach that the statutes which govern their land and protect the rights of its citizens were not obligatory, that they restricted the liberties of the people and therefore not ought not to be obeyed, how long would such men be tolerated in the pulpit? But it is graver offense to disregard the laws of states and nations than to trample upon those divine precepts which are the foundation of all government. It would be far more consistent for nations to abolish their statutes and permit the people to do as they please than for the ruler of the universe to annul his law and leave the world without a standard to condemn the guilty or justify the obedient. Friends, these readings gives us a clear picture of the great controversy raging today between those who exalt the law of God and between those who trample or eradicate or diminish or destroy the law of God within the church of God outside the church of God the issue here is obedience and against rebellion we obey God because he first loved us and we keep his law because we love him in return those who profess to be Christians ought to understand that God has a perpetual law and that is the law of love written by his own finger the Ten Commandments which is binding which is the law of love which is the government of love love God and love your fellow man and the laws are hanging on those two important principles of heaven friends today I would like to invite you to fully and diligently understand or comprehend the Word of God in its entirely because right now we are facing deception delusion and as well as the destruction of the pillars of our faith it's time for us to make a stand the law of God must be upheld the law of God is the, is his character the government of God must be must be protected and upholded so friends I will continue reading this at some point in time but I would like you to open your hearts and your minds that there are people who would like to destroy the law of God and so today the impending conflict which was written 200 years almost 200 years ago is actually fiercer fiercest in our time today the sole purpose of Satan together with his agencies in this world is to destroy Bible believing Christians commandment keeping people we need to be aware we need to be vigilant may God continue to help us may God continue to preserve us may God continue to protect us and may God help us with wisdom to prepare us to as to continue to defend the Bible truth and to assault the evil one with the Word of God may God continue to bless you is my prayer